what I've got open before us here is an SPSS data set that contains body temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and also heart rate in beats per minute for 130 individuals. Now you notice the middle variable there, sex, has a value of 1 for 65 individuals and as we scroll down further we see it has a value of 2 for another 65 individuals. So our total sample size is 130. Looking at the variable view window to get a sense of what the value is for the individuals um, for the variable sex, clicking on the values box, we notice here that a value of uh, 1 is assigned to men and a value of 2 is assigned to women. Now one of the first things I'm going to do here is demonstrate how we can generate information uh, related to the means and standard deviations for a grouped variable. You know, I'd like to know what the average body temperature, let's say, is for men, the average for women, perhaps also then the standard deviation for each of these groups. So I'll come up to Analyze come down to compare means and I'll come straight across to the command means. What we have here is a dependent list and that's going to be the variable that will generate the means for and we'll look at body temperature first and the independent list that's the grouping variable. In that case I'll bring over the variable sex. There are two categories or two groups here we'll see uh, for uh, the variable sex. So what this is going to do now is generate information for each of the groups individually as well as the sample overall. I will go ahead and click OK. And you notice the output we see is generated. First of all, this first box here is case processing summary. It indicates that there are 130 cases that have valid information for both of these variables. And you notice also then that there are no cases excluded, so there's no missing data here. That just gives you a sense of what cases were used for generating the statistics you see below. Now the box then labeled below that report actually reports the mean, uh, the number of cases in each category for sex, and also standard deviation. So men have an average uh, body temperature of 98.1 degree Fahrenheit compared to women of 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit in essence. There are 65 individuals in both samples, and we see that standard deviation for body temperature is about 0.699, or about 0.7 rather, and about 0.74 uh, for women. So if we want to just get a sense as to what are the descriptive statistics we see here, the basics for mean, sample size, and standard deviation, we can just easily use the analyze uh, and then go down to the compare means and means um, command. Now we can also generate more descriptive statistics by group for a variable. I'll come back up to analyze, come down to compare means again, and come over again to the command means. Now I'll click on the options that button that we see here in this box, and you notice the list of different statistics that can be generated uh, in this uh, particular uh, with this particular command. I can generate the report the minimum, the maximum, uh, we can also generate kurtosis, skewness, really get a sense of what the distribution looks like, as well as a harmonic and geometric means. Um, I'll go ahead and just click continue and then click OK. And so now what you see now is a table that reports a variety then of descriptive statistics for the entire sample, that being the total category there, but also broken down by the grouping variable sex, men as well as women. Well, I showed you how to generate information for uh, basic descriptive statistics by group. What we're going to do now is look at hypothesis testing for comparing two group means. What we'll do is come up under the, again, the Analyze menu. So I'll move the cursor on top of Analyze, that word, that menu uh, label. Left mouse button click to open up the options. We'll come down here now to compare means again. But instead of means, we're going to come down to the independent samples t-test. That's what we'll be assuming here, that we have two different groups, that the membership in one group in one sample 
does not determine or influence the membership in the second sample. So we're using an independent samples t-test. Let's again look at the variable body temp. So we're going to compare the average body temperature for men and for women. And so the test variable, that's our dependent variable, will bring over body temp. And the grouping variable is going to be our categorical variable here, sex, which will bring over under the grouping variable. Now you notice once I do that, and again the grouping variable is going to be the independent variable clearly, we're asking how does uh, the group which you belong to maybe influence or determine uh, the, your body temperature. We notice that when sex is brought over in parentheses it has two question marks and what we have to do is define which value for the grouping variable for sex is assigned as the first group in our comparison and which one is assigned the second group in our comparison. It's important to keep in mind which is assigned group one and which is assigned group two because that will determine how we go about interpreting then the results that we generate. So let's come down and click on the button for define groups. Now recall that there were two values one for male and two for female and one of the things you always want to do before you assign the groups is know what numerical values are assigned for each of the groups. I'll just go ahead and put the value of one for group number one and the value of two for group number two. You know this is arbitrary whichever is group one. I could have instead put women as group one so that I could have put then the value of two in for group one such as in this way in that case group one would be assigned the value of female and group two is assigned the value of male but I tend to just stick with numerical order unless there is a reason that I want to uh, switch the groups around in terms of order. Now given that we have two groups here some categorical variables we may have three four or five categories in that case we can specify any two categories to comprise group one or group two. Let's go ahead and click continue and notice now we see a value of one for sex is indicated to be group one and a value two is indicated uh, to be group two for the variable sex. So what it's going to do now, it's going to take the mean of group one and subtract from that, compare that to the mean of group two. Click OK and here's the output that's generated. Now I'm going to make the command window, the list of previously executed commands a little smaller so I can see the entire output for uh, the t-test, independent samples t-test command and we see here then that the very first box of group statistics so I could have just simply uh, issued the independent samples t-test command and generated then the average for men and for women but it wouldn't have the total average and there were some other statistics I wanted to show you. We can break down by group also with the means command. But we see here that 65 individuals in each of the two categories for male and female. We see the average temperature and standard deviation that we've computed before uh, with merely the means command. But now we get down to the second box here and this is really the output for the independent samples t-test. Now what you notice, first of all, the first two columns here that are labeled Levine's test for equality of variances. In order to interpret the output from a difference of means test, what we first of all need to do is we need to ask which of the two values for the t-test do we report. You notice there were two rows in this output. The first row is associated with a t-test that is computed assuming that the variances from which our two samples were drawn are equal, the second version of the t-test in the second row here is computed with the assumption that the equal variances are not assumed. So it's assumed that the groups are not from populations with similar variances. If we look at the standard deviations we see in the group statistics box, we notice that uh, men have a standard deviation of about 0.7 and women about 0.74, that seems like it's fairly close, not much of a difference there. So it looks like just on the surface that men and women come from populations that have similar variance in terms of body temperature. 
but the Levine's F test actually tests that assumption. We'll notice that the Levine's test for the equality of variances is an F test, always will be positive. It has a value in this case of 0 0.061. Now, <clears throat> the null hypothesis for this hypothesis test is that uh, the groups come from populations that have equal variances for the dependent variable that we're looking at. So in that case, that men and women come from populations whose body temperature is, has an equal variance for each of the two groups. The significance value here is the probability value of our test statistic. It has a value of 0 0.805. The way we will interpret this, given that we have, um, let's assume, a 95% confidence level, if the probability value, or as SPSS labels, the significance value, is less than or equal to 0 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis here, again, is that the samples come from populations with equal variances because the probability value here for this test statistic, this F test of equality of variances, is point, it has a value of 0.81 in essence. That's greater than an alpha 0.05 if we use a 95% confidence level. So we will fail to reject the null hypothesis that the samples come from populations with equal variances. So in that case, we will report the t-test that's listed in the first row. So the t-test here has a value of minus 2.285. Its degrees of freedom is 128. And we see the t-test has a significance value or a probability value of 0 0.024. In that case, if we uh, draw samples from populations that have equal means as well as equal variances for our variable of interest, only 2.4% of the time would we generate two samples that would produce a t-test of minus 2.285 or more extreme. So in that case, since our probability value for this t-test statistic is less than or equal to 0.05, it's less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis that is assumed for the t-test. And the t-test will always have a null hypothesis that the groups come from populations with identical means. So because the probability value is less than an alpha 0.05, just using the 95% confidence level, we would conclude then that our samples of men and women likely did not come from populations with identical means. We reject the null hypothesis. In that case, there is a statistically significant difference between the mean body temperature of men and the mean body temperature of women in this particular example. When we actually look at the difference between the two, subtracting body temperature of women from body temperature of men, so men minus uh, the, the male average temperature minus the female average temperature, we get a mean difference of minus 2.892 degrees. And that's what's listed then in the mean difference category. You notice also what we have here is the standard error for the difference between those two means. And using the mean difference information as well as the standard error, we can compute a confidence interval around that mean difference. And in this case, the default for, uh, for SPSS is to produce the 95% confidence interval. So at the 95% confidence level, the likely difference in the two population means from which our two groups were randomly drawn from varies anywhere from men having temperatures that are on average about 0.54 degrees cooler than women to men having average temperatures that are about 0 0.04 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than women. Because zero is not contained within this confidence interval, it's not between this lower or upper limit for our confidence interval, we would then conclude that it is unlikely our samples come from populations that have identical means. So in that case, there is a statistically significant difference between our two group means in terms of the populations from where they come from. So we can generate then not only a t-test, but also generate then the confidence interval.
Now, just as an aside, if you are interested in terms of comparing what would the value of t be for equal variances assumed versus equal variances are not, not assumed, if we fail to reject, or if, rather, if we reject the null hypothesis that the groups come from populations with equal variances, the t-test values really won't vary much. What varies a little bit will be the degrees of freedom. Um, but when you have situations where uh, the groups come from populations that have wildly different variances, then you'll see that your t-test values in the degrees of freedom can diverge a bit. And that's where then the results will be sensitive to that assumption. But in this case, uh, we really see that there's not much of a difference between our even our confidence intervals for whether we use either the equal variances assumed or the equal variances not assumed uh, test statistic in standard errors. To demonstrate a second example of the difference between two group means, what I'd like to do now is examine the difference in terms of the average heart rate between men and women using the exact same data set. Come back to analyze. I'll come down to again compare means. I'll come over to again independent samples t-test. Let's now bring the dependent variable or the testing variable back over to the variable list and now let's choose the heart rate variable as our testing or comparison variable. We want to know uh, the average heart rate does it differ for our two groups. I'll keep the same grouping variable even assigning men the value of 1 to group 1 and women the value of 2 to group 2. Now let's go ahead and click OK to execute the command. We notice here in terms of the group statistics box that men have average heart rates of about 73.4 beats per minute while women have average heart rates of 75.2 beats per minute in essence so men have slightly uh, slower heart rates. If we look at the standard deviations, now we see a little bit more of a difference in the standard deviation between our two groups. The uh, standard deviation for the 65 men in our group uh, for heart rate is about 5.9 beats per minute, while women have a standard deviation of 8.1 beats per minute for the sample. Let's go down now to the independent samples t-test output. Let's first of all ask the question, which version of the t-test should we report and interpret? Do we report the version that assumes the variances are equal from where the two populations were draw samples were drawn from? Or do we instead assume, uh, use the report the version of the t-test that was computed, assuming that our two samples were drawn from populations with unequal variances for heart rate? Looking at the results for the Levine's test for equality of variances, we see the F test for this examination is 8.6. Keep in mind the null hypothesis for the Levine's test is that our two samples were drawn from populations that do have similar or equal variances for the variable heart rate. That F test of 8.6 has a significance value or a probability value of 0 0.004. In that case, if we drew 1,000 samples from a population or from two populations that have identical variances in terms of heart rate, we would find only four of those thousand samples would generate an F test of 8.6 or higher. Given that this probability value of 0.004 is less than, let's go back and use our standard assumption of a 95% confidence level, which means an alpha of 0.05, since 0.004 is less than our alpha of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis of equal variances. In that case, we assume now that our two samples are drawn from populations that have different variances in terms of heart rate. So that means we need to report the t-test that is computed assuming variances are not equal in the populations from where the samples were drawn, which means that's the second row that we report.
Now the value of the t-test is still the same, minus 0.632. The degrees of freedom are a little smaller, 116.7. It works out to be then for the probability value for this particular t-test for the difference between two group means has a probability value of 0.53 or 0.529 to be more precise. Given our null hypothesis for the test for the equality of two, ver uh, two sample means is that the samples come from populations with identical means, our probability value is greater than our alpha level 0.05. Clearly 0.529 is greater than 0.05. So therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that our samples come from populations with identical means. So in that case, while these two samples come from populations that have different variances in terms of heart rate, we see here that the difference in terms of heart rate is not considered to be statistically significant. Now the mean difference we see here uh, in the column under the test for equality of means output is minus 0.785. That means that group 1 has a heart rate that is 0.785 beats slower per minute than group 2. Since men are group 1 and women are group 2, that means then that men have heart rates that are 0.785 uh, beats per minute slower than for uh, women. In terms of actually computing the test statistic, the t-test we see here that's reported, if we merely took the mean difference and divide of minus 0.785 and divide it by then the standard error for that difference of, point, of 1.242, we would end up with the t-test uh, statistic value of minus 0.632. In terms of the 95% confidence interval for the difference between these two groups, you know, while the value of the t-test here is not different, uh, the significance test, uh, probability value for the t-test is not different at out to the uh, the third decimal uh, between the assumption of equal variances or unequal variances. What you notice here, you do start to see by the third decimal in terms of the confidence intervals, the interval constructed assuming equal variance is not assumed is slightly larger, slightly wider than the interval that's constructed under the assumption that equal variances is assumed. So we are going to report then that second um, confidence interval around the mean difference, which is minus 3.2 for the lower limit and the upper limit of 1.675. Because a zero does fall between those two limits, we would conclude then it is likely then that these two samples were drawn from populations that have a difference in their means in terms of heart rate of zero. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and also in terms of interpreting the confidence interval we conclude there's not a statistically significant difference in terms of these two group means. But in any event I wanted to show you this example because based upon Levine's test we will report the second version of the t-test that's reported here. One last thing I'd like to do before we finish up is show you how you can change the default for constructing the confidence interval. The default in SPSS is it will generate confidence intervals at the 95% confidence level, which is what a, how I've been interpreting the probability values here um, for our Levine's test and also for our t-test. And I should point out very quickly that if you are using a 95% confidence level for the Levine's test, you should use that same confidence level for the t-test. So be consistent in terms of what your, um, your standard is for statistical significance when you're using both of those tests. But let's say we want to instead use a 99% confidence level for our hypothesis testing or for constructing our confidence intervals. What we can do is come up to Analyze, come down again to Compare Means, and we'll come again to the independent samples t-test. Using the same assumptions we have right now in terms of the test variable, the grouping variable, as well as uh, what values of sex were assigned to group 1 and group 2. All I'm going to do here is come up under Options, click on that button, 
and you notice here the very first line is I can change now the confidence level that I want to generate the confidence intervals for. So if I'm using a 99% confidence level, just type in 90, uh, 99 to generate then uh, the confidence interval at that level. If I wanted to use a 90% confidence level, just type in 90 at this point. I'm going to make it 99. That's going to be more common here. Click continue. And what it's going to report in the output now, everything will be the same except for, we notice then in the last two columns of the um, independent samples test, t-test output, now we see the 99% confidence intervals uh, are reported. And again, this is constructed around the difference between our two group means.